Here it is, another episode of the Infinite Banter Podcast. My name is Mark Jolliffe, also known as DJ Soundwave. Thanks for checking out the show. Big up to all of you who have been telling others, hey, check this dude out, listen to that show. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for that. All the comments, replies, the ratings, all those things. I definitely salute all of you. Today's show, we've been talking about it in the last couple episodes, so today's the day. Pamela Davis Nolan is on the show to talk about her new film coming soon called Room for Dessert. Make sure you follow Room for Dessert on Instagram and all the social media places. You can definitely find out more at novacvideo.org. Really excited for this. It looks like it's going to be a tremendous film when it comes out. I've seen the trailer, and I'm just really excited to talk about it with Pamela coming up here. And also... Room for Dessert has been spoken on this show before, about a year ago when I had Carrie Cahill and Theotis Crane on. Most of you know them from The Walking Dead. Well, they are both involved with Room for Dessert. Carrie is a producer on it, and Theotis stars in the film. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a part of the interview I did with them last year, bring that back for the episode where they talk about Room for Dessert and their involvement with it. And this is back when they're doing pre-production. So it's been about a year later. Things are starting to move forward, and it's getting closer and closer to getting done. And we'll get all those details from Pamela when she comes on here in a few minutes. But before we move forward, we always go back. And on my last episode, we had Pretty Bully on, and she is just one of the nicest lyricists in the game right now. So here's a flashback from the last episode, Pretty Bully, on the Infinite Banter Podcast. Flashback. I think people are more surprised with how I carry myself along with how I speak. Because when you look at the charts, there's a certain narrative that are being played, that's being played for women, you know? And I don't fit that description. Right. So it was like, oh my God, who was that? You know, it's, it's like I'm a unicorn. I'm not, it's a lot of us out here, but the light is just being shined elsewhere. You know, it's overly sexualized. It, it's it's not often you see an actual woman talking about things that happen every day you know it's more so mimicking what they see what they want to look like and it's it's rough so it makes it seem like mcs like myself don't exist we do had a lot of fun talking with pretty bully she is definitely one of the lyricists out there people need to recognize and pay attention to she has She's got bars for days, or as she puts it, bars for breakfast. You go on her Instagram, she'll be in her car, and she'll be just killing it in that red Silverado. So salute to Pretty Bully. If you've not heard that episode, go back and check out the full episode there. Stay tuned for her new album with Kid Call Quest called Then and Now. You can check out her latest EP, Duffel Bag Bully, on all platforms. So let's get into today's episode. Pamela Davis Nolan is here. We're going to talk about Room for Dessert, a short film that she's coming out with pretty soon. Can't wait to see it. We're going to talk about that film and much, much more. Later on in the show, we've got a flashback from Theotis Crane and Carrie Cahill, two previous guests on the show who are involved at Room for Dessert. We'll play a segment of that interview I did with both of them coming up later in the show. And also later on in the show, I'm going to mention... My three favorite movies set in New Orleans. So Pamela's from New Orleans. This Room for Dessert film is set in New Orleans. And it had me thinking, uh, there were a couple of movies that popped in my head immediately when I started thinking about New Orleans. So i writing down a couple that I like, and I'll bring those to you guys at the end of the episode. So stay tuned for all that. Got a lot to do, so let's get into it. Pamela Davis Nolan, Room for Dessert, let's get into it. You're checking out the Infinite Banter podcast. You can hear it on all platforms. Follow us on social media at Infinite Banter Podcast. Check for clips on YouTube. Rate and review the show on Good Pods, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, places like that. Check out the Spotify playlist, all those things. So let's go ahead and get into it. Pamela Davis Nolan is here. We're going to talk about room for dessert and much, much more. But before we start the show, it never begins until the one and only. The king from Queens, DMC, gets on. He says this, and the show begins. Yo, yo, what's up? This is me, DMC, the K-I-N-G, the greatest MC in history. And right now, you're listening to Infinite Banter, because we will banter on forever, because this is the only place for all of y'all to ever be. I be Infinite Banter. 
You're tuned into the Infinite Banter Podcast. I'm Mark Jolliffe, and I'm really excited to be joined by my guest, who has a short film coming soon called Room for Dessert that deals with systemic racism. Welcome to the show, writer, playwright, producer, and filmmaker, the one and only Pamela Davis Nolan. How's it going, Hi. Pamela? See, there you go. Great. I love that introduction. Wow. Yeah, I try to, you know, I, I always do this whenever I have somebody on. I try to find out, you know, some little nuggets of information to give out there to get people some knowledge about who they're getting ready to hear from. And I'm sure I left yeah. out some other, you know, jobs you're qualified for and other, <laughs> other titles and everything. But <laughs> no, That's cool. That's a lot. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, there you go. So for people who are not familiar with your work, I mean, talk about some of your past projects and how you got into, you know, producing and writing. I know there's a long history there. Yes. Well, I started off as, as a novelist, actually, and um, wrote and, and, and self-published uh, my first novel, uh, Coffee Colored Dreams, which is a New Orleans story. Most of my most of my story, the backdrop will be New Orleans. <laughs> you know, so you that, that was my first offering um, as far as my my work as a writer and um, and publisher. And uh, so the book was doing really well as far as sales was concerned, but then the sales got kind of slow. And so I got the idea to, to uh, adapt it into a, a stage play. And that was, in a, that was in order to get more eyes on it and be able to sell books in the lobby. You know, I was being a businesswoman at the same time, but right. I, I, I was the bug. The bug bit me when I did theater for the first time and never looked back. And so um, producing just came out of necessity because I wanted my work to be seen and it worked so well with my first offering with Coffee Colored Dreams, the, the play, I continued in, to do it. And so all of my work, all, the majority of my work was uh, produced, I produced, I produced myself. The main one, um, I should say my claim to fame being a musical that I that I wrote and produced titled uh, Baduisms, a tribute to Erica Badu. Oh. And uh, that that is that's a hit. <laughs> and it's actually uh, we actually toured with Baduism, uh, uh, the, the the tribute in Houston, Texas, New Orleans, what? Oklahoma. City. I have that yeah. record. I can pull it out if I, if I look hard enough. I <laughs> I'm a big fan of Erica Badu. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So that that really that really did a lot for me as far as my career in New Orleans uh, in yeah. theater. I did a lot of directing uh, other people's work uh, through other theaters there in New Orleans. Um, I worked in film there, behind the scenes uh, in film there, especially uh, during the during the reign of the Treme, the show the Treme that was on yes. um, HBO. I worked with that with HBO uh, behind the scenes with that. So I got a little taste of the film work and met a lot of people in film uh there so that's where a lot of a lot of it started with just almost like organically i'll be i'll be honest to say my career just all it was everything just happened organically it wasn't like oh now i'm gonna decide to do this and right. or it just kind of fell in that way especially with room for dessert um room for dessert was a one-act play that i was commissioned to write for a, a, a small theater company in, in New Orleans at the time. This was 2015. And I was commissioned to write a play, one act play for a festival that we're doing. And it had to be something timely. And it had to be something that they considered well, it had to be dark. You know? and so 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 at that time we were we were dealing with whew, police brutality and, yeah. and, the, and the losing the lives of a lot of black men, you know, at the particular time in 2014, Tamir Rice, right. you know, and, 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 and other men, you know, other two other gentlemen that, that whose name was escaping me always because there's so many any, um, that we lost in, in 2014. So at the time when I wrote Room for Dessert, that what was on my mind uh, was, you know, the, 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 the injustice, the systemic racism, the losing of all these black men, unarmed black men, you know. And so I wrote that play and, and for the festival and it was a hit for the festival. And there was one actor, New Orleans actor in particular, he works in Hollywood by the name of Terrence Rosemore. Terrence Rosamore, and he was he was in the um, audience one night, and he went around asking everyone who wrote that, who wrote this, who, who? and you know, so they <laughs> told him, and he he emailed me, and he said, "Sis, this needs to be a film. This you you got you got more eyes need to be on this." And this was in 2015. Well, fast forward 2020, and here we are again. Black Lives Matter. Right. Uh, hands up, don't shoot. Actually, started. Actually, the thought came to me in 2018. Uh, the film is dedicated to Botham Jong, the young man who was murdered in his own apartment as he was eating dessert, and um, who 
an off-duty police officer went into his apartment, supposedly mistaking him uh, for, for being in her apartment and shot and killed the young man. Right, and so that's when, the, right, that's when it hit me like, OK, it's time. It's time to do this uh, film that Terrence Rosemore said that I need to do um, and get this message out of systemic racism and this police brutality and what it's doing to our community. What is it doing to my community? What is it doing to black men in this community? And so I pulled it out, took the dust off. And in 2020, got a phone call from Theo. Crane, the oldest Crane, <laughs> who said, Pam, I'm back in New Orleans. What you got? And I said, well, let me tell you what I got. And the the wheel started turning in 2020. And lo and behold, he's the star of the of the short Room for Dessert. Yeah, to think about, you said 2015 is when this all kind of started to come to you. And here we are, 2024. And a lot has happened between then and now. And like you said, 2020 right. was almost like uh, it probably pushed it even four. I mean, yes. I could name so many, you know, George Floyd yes. and Eric Garner, you yes. know, Freddie Gray. Yes. There's so many. Yes. Uh, it's, so it's, many. I hate, uh, you know, Trayvon Martin. I mean, we could we go on and on yes. and it's just, yes. uh, unfortunately. and I can see where, you know, some of that, as it's starting to happen seemingly, seemingly all the time mm-hmm. that it's kind of pushing you to maybe even get this out there and, and make sure that it gets done. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, and, 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 and to add to that also, there are so many times where, where we're marching and we're hands up, don't shoot and Black Lives Matter. And then something else will happen in the community, you know, in particular in, the, in 2020, the Asian community started screaming Asian rights, you know, no offense to any any other uh, BIPOC community. But at the time when that happened, it kind of pushed us to the back of the line again, you know, and it happens a lot in, right. in my community, you know, where something else like. For instance, I last year was did a great job um, in fundraising to be able to actually film. And so then we went straight into post-production fundraising and wasn't getting any traction because of the war in Gaza and Israel. So then once again, you know, no one's paying attention to my fight against systemic racism. So I'm screaming and I'm not going to stop. And the film, as Paris Wilsonmore said, it needs this this short this one act play, Pam needs more eyes. And with it being a film, it, you can get more traction. And so that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm so adamant about this film, because it has a message. It has a serious message. You know, it's a what if, not an answer. Film for Dessert is not an answer to systemic racism. It's actually a question. It's a what if. It's a what if we as a people get tired of marching? What if? What if we get tired of saying, don't shoot us and don't kill us? What if we just get tired? And what if we decide to take matters into our own hands? And what if that looks like revenge? That's the question that I'm posing right. with Room for Dessert through the eyes of one man who decided that particular day that he was not going to take it. Not that, today. Yeah. And that trailer really shows that. It's powerful. You know, the trailer that is out there for the, a lot of the uh, yeah. the Kickstarter, uh, pe- you know, those who have uh, contributed. You can see the trailer and you just see it and it comes out. It's so chilling. And when I see, you know, Theoda's character sitting down there, it's just like, all right, what happened? Like, what's going on? And. Oof. Mm-hmm. The tagline, yeah. I wanted to read the tagline for people here because I saw it on in, in the Instagram for a Room for Dessert. A police officer is mm-hmm. acquitted, a diner is running out of homemade chocolate cake, and the protests have started. There's a lot there. I mean, just reading that, I'm oh, just, yeah. there's so much in there. I don't know how you yeah. can do this in 15 minutes. It just feels like 15 minutes is a, yeah. is a short 18, amount of time. I'll, I'll be honest, oh, it's 18, 18 minutes okay. total with credit. Okay. But it's 15, but it's, I mean, like, like, I guess 17, but 18 and some change with credit. So we managed to do we managed to do it, and the message is clear. It comes through loud and clear, and uh, visually, and um, and his, his 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 explanation of why he does what he does, and um, so yes, the message does come through loud and clear. It's not a pleasant, although the the title is so sweet. Uh, the message is not, but it's so necessary. You know, it's hard to to swallow. But very, very important to digest. Was it a challenge to do it as a short film? Was there ever a time we thought, I need more time, I need 30 minutes, I need an hour? Is oh, there... absolutely, uh-huh. absolutely. And and, and and to be perfectly honest with you, this is just a sample of the, of what I'm offering. It's a feature film. This is just a sample of it. Ah, uh, okay. Room for Dessert is a feature film. Oh, there's there's more. There's there's a story behind every one of these characters that 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 will that that I'm writing it as as right now. It's in the lab right now, and everyone has a story that culminates into right be- what happens right before that takes place. That moment takes place. So we find out why Killer does what he does, and we find out how and why they end up at that diner that particular evening when so much was going on outside. 
you had brought up Treme earlier and uh, David Simon. I'm, I'm a big fan of The Wire, and that's why I watch Treme as well. And mm-hmm. those two shows are very similar to what you were just talking about, where it's a lot of different moving parts. Uh, there's a you know group mm-hmm. group here and someone here, and all that kind of comes together as one full story, even if they are not exactly. indirectly or directly involved. And it sounds like that's what you have mm-hmm. here, is you've got people who kind of come to this diner who maybe don't know each other or anything, and it just this is what's going to happen. And there's more to tell beyond that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I'm a fan, too. I'm a fan as well. I'm a fan of The Wire. I'm a fan of, 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 of uh, Treme. I'm a fan of David Simon. I, I had the opportunity to actually uh, communicate with them via uh, correspondence when I was working as an agent for one of the uh, talent, talented musicians, uh, Harold Baptiste, in New Orleans. And they were overlooking him. They had a lot of artists there in, in, you know, in New Orleans that they were um, presenting and, and promoting there on the show. And they were overlooking Harold Baptiste, who, who was in his late 80s and who had who was very prominent as far as the jazz scene in new orleans and uh so i was able to write a letter to david simon and his partner then and um who passed away and i can't say his name uh and and i was and they they acknowledged and they responded and mr baptiste was on the show not once but twice so wow. i'm happy to say that's a feather in my hat I was able to do big time and talk about New Orleans is just, you know, is, is the room for dessert, by the way, is it filmed and, and set in New Orleans? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I'm going to always go home. There you go. I'm gonna always work home. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to always try to hire at home, you know, and at the time when we, um, when we shot, you know, we, were, we shot the film during the strike. We had to actually get permission from SAG right. uh, for, for some of the people to like BO and, um, Ron Flagg, uh, they were SAG actors. They are SAG actors, and Donald Lewis. And so we had to, and also Beth Bartley. Man, they're all of those people are SAG actors in the film, and we had to get permission in order to to you know use them. And as an independent artist, I was given the opportunity to use them, and a lot of the crew were SAG as well. So at a time when they were all on strike and not making any money, uh, we were able to do it, and I was able to hire and and pay people at a time uh, in their career when there was no work for them. Wow, and that so kind of that, that was yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's amazing. You're able to do that, and it was kind of uh-huh. taking me to my next question. I was going to ask, what are some of the obstacles of doing, you know, an independent short film like this where there's no big studio behind it? And you kind of answered some of that there. We you know when, when you had the strike going on and everything. Was that mm-hmm. really tough mm-hmm. to even get crew and people to show up and every everything like that? Well, thanks to thanks to Carrie Cahill, who is the most who is producer of all producers. Yes. Um, I can't say uh, that it was easy. She did a phenomenal job putting together the most incredible crew a girl could ever, like myself, could ever dream of. And and Carrie is well established in, in the industry, and people love her, understandably so. And and she's so professional, and uh, she oh, she was so dedicated to this project. At the time, she was also in grad school while she was producing this film, and was able to do that. You know work through her school and and you know her schooling and make her grades and also gather up these phenomenal people uh to introduce this film it was just an amazing amazing experience to sit back and watch you know i have to give her a full credit on that you know on on, on how we were able to do it yes carrie cahill that's how we were able to do it she did that <laughs> <laughs> i have to tell you that she gets all the credit for that and um and i love her she's a dear friend um i love her to death we've worked together in theater um i've directed her work before you know i've directed her uh in, on stage and um so we work well together uh, she's a fireball in this in this industry in this film industry she knows exactly what she's doing and um also was able to get uh get me a grant through Pan, with panavision to get all this incredible equipment that was all carry too because i was a first time filmmaker and independent and panavision loved the message of the film we got the best equipment there you go. To, to, to shoot the film. So, amazing. Salute to Carrie. And she, yeah, she's phenomenal. Her and Theodos came on the show like a year ago. And uh, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. So I definitely focused on that. But then as they started talking, I was like, wow, there's other things they're doing. And, and this room for dessert is where that's where I first heard about it. And I was like, oh my God, this yep. sounds incredible. And yeah, like you yep. said, she was in school at the time. And she's just juggling yes, all this stuff. Yes, and yes. that's amazing. She was juggling, baby. She was juggling. So during post production, it's Theo and I and. Um, my my first AD Nicole Collins. Uh, we're we're doing post production and we have an amazing team of people. There's joined as uh, Chris Piquion. He's doing sound and color. 
and we just we just actually signed on uh, well he just signed on with us he actually asked us to be a part of the project because he loves it and he wants to be a part of it and he just believes in it and he's produced some music producer Moby Dick from the from the No Limit Soldier thing uh, who did all the beats and the music uh, for for Master P and the and the uh -huh. whole crew of the, the No Limit crew and uh, Moby Dick a dear friend of mine is now joined as composer for Room for Dessert so we got a phenomenal group of people behind this film man yeah we really do my husband and I are so my husband Joshua uh, Winston and I are so um blessed to have all these great people without a doubt team. and you know you brought up the music the trailer again the music in it is so haunting and it's you know comes yeah. off like a thriller almost. I mean I know more about it, so I you know I wouldn't think that it is necessarily like a horror film or anything. But when you watch it, it's like yeah. it's, the music well, is so well, chilling well, and biting. Yeah. Yeah. Quick disclaimer. I have to hurry up and interrupt. Quick disclaimer. It's not the music that's gonna be. That's not the final music. It's filler music. Oh okay. And Moby Dick is gonna Moby Dick is gonna provide that music. That All right. You're there hearing. you go. The song. The song is written uh, and sung and uh, by and produced by Tony Henry, artist out of Houston, Texas, named. Tony Henry. Look him up. He's a phenomenal independent artist himself. Um, we go back a long time. We have a history of working together as well. He sang in most of my theater productions, and he's he actually uh, uh, blessed us with the with the song that 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 you'll hear in in, in the film. That's great. Uh, yeah, I, that, yeah, I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm just glad you said 18 <laughs> minutes, so there's even more to watch. I'm <laughs> to, to be yeah, better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just a sample of what's to come. Right. So sit tight, sit tight, because uh, once we get out here and get to these festivals and get in the face of these other producers who may, who may, you know, go, you know, wow, let's 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 back this thing, and that's what we're hoping for. Speaking of which, Novak in Houston, I'm sorry, in New Orleans, Louisiana, Novak Video is our is our sponsor, is our fiscal sponsor, and people can actually go to NovakVideo.org and donate to the film. Because we still need funds to finish post production and to get to these festivals to get the word out, and um, it's a great cause. You know, it's not just a film. We're we're fighting. We're still out here in these streets right. fighting. Yeah. Yeah, and also you could bring up the Kickstarter too, because I that's another way to get involved, and that's how I got a, access to the trailer. And um, right. everybody out there, I mean, it could be a small amount, it could be a large amount, and there's perks, you know, depending on the yes. amount you give. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we will pull the Kickstarter back up. We had a we had a Kickstarter that we we, we fulfilled the first, you know, we were able to to, to raise ten thousand uh, dollars to to actually shoot, and then we actually went back to Kickstarter to do a post production, but we put it we we stopped it because of the holidays. But we're gonna put it back up again, so people will be able to go to our Kickstarter page, Kickstarter uh, forward slash Room for Dessert. And um and you can go there now and read about everything and see everything and then the post production one will be up in the next week or so so people can donate through Kickstarter and they can all right right now readily kick, uh, donate through Novak um, Video dot org we have a cash app room for dessert film oh there's more than one way to to, to donate to this uh, phenomenal body of work and uh, there's also a great behind the scenes on YouTube I found that really yes, kind of takes yes. it home yeah you can talk about that as yeah, well yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. We have a great behind the scenes uh, young student uh, who her name is Ashlyn, who joined us um, and she did a great job doing the photos. A lot of the photos you'll see and um, that we oh, our Instagram. Oh, please follow us on Instagram. We 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 promote. We, we have a lot of behind the scenes photos um, and uh, videos and. And right now we're celebrating Black History Month. So, yeah, all that's going on in our, in our Room for Dessert film Instagram page. Please like and follow and share and, and do that little bell thingy so you can stay up to date <laughs> right. on what's going on. <laughs> that the bell so thingy. Awesome. That's kind of what I call it because I don't know what these things are called anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get the bell thingy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> this is all so new to me. Oh my God, I'm so old school. But you know, that's that's another thing I, I'd like to, to to point out. You know, in 1965, the Civil Rights Act movement and all that, uh, signed was signed and all that good stuff was going on in '65, right? And it was like, yay, you know, we're gonna do better as a people. Woohoo! But that's the year I was born. Oh, so wow. I I jumped into this world in '65 thinking I would never have to deal with what my mom and my dad and you know everyone, my husband's fa family and older siblings had to deal with. You know, because now things are going to change. And here it is in 2023. I did a film about the same thing still happening to my people. 
via the boys in blue killing us. Right. What's wrong with this picture, man? Yeah, you. And I don't want to leave this world. I don't want to leave here with this. This is why Room for Dessert is so important for me. You know, I was hoodwinked. <laughs> you know, without a doubt. I was born here at that time. It was supposed to be a change. There's no way I should be still screaming and fighting and marching. And, well, I refuse to march and I refuse to scream and holler anymore. I'm going to use the medium that I know. And and that is the written word and that is film and that is theater and everything, everywhere else I can entertain people and, and to get my message across. Because usually that's the way people need to hear it. If they need to be entertained. Well, okay, I can do that. But listen and watch and pay attention to what I'm saying. And it sounds like even because, though it's a short film, there's a lasting impression you want the viewer to get from seeing this, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It's a message. It's a movement. It's not just a film. I didn't do it just for fluff. I'll, I'll be honest with you. In 2015, I was fighting cancer and I was losing the battle. And But I had been commissioned to write the play. And I and I was like, I'm going to do it come hell or high water. So I sat propped up in my bed and I wrote it because I thought it was going to be the last thing that I was going to ever write in life. Wow. So this was going to be my offering. I was not going to leave here without that message because I still was waiting for a change. So I had to leave that message. Well, I made it. And I, I'm on the other side of the cancer. I survived. That's great. Yeah, cancer and take, so I get to see it, and I get to make down. it happen. No, yeah, this had this obviously real listening, and this had to, this story had to be told. This message has to get out there, and damn cancer, <laughs> it's not gonna get get the yeah, message to, right? not told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancer sucks. Fuck cancer. <laughs> exactly. But you know, I I fought it. I won, and and now I have to. I have to do this because, in my personal opinion, it's why I survived. Without a doubt, and. You know, those yeah. who are going to see this when it comes out. Is there a release date? I mean, it's still probably in the works right? as far as when it will come well, out. We're still, yeah, we're, we're in post-production and we're still asking for funds so that we can get it out there sooner than later. To be perfectly transparent with you, we need money, man, to order in order to get it finished so that we can finish this. Because I can't I can't leave this world without getting this message through, apparently, because I didn't die. Yeah, and that was, what, nine years ago? So, obviously, Absolutely. <laughs> you've been kicking cancer's ass and 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 doing the same thing with the putting this together that's just incredible and you know what are what are some of the big obstacles too because you you talked about this earlier you know about the funding and everything is it also Mm -hmm. just just having the time and the equipment at at a ready and you said carrie helped a lot with that and getting cast you know yeah what's that like just casting for this i mean that has to be another challenge it's incredibly it's an it's a lot of work i mean it was it, it was nonstop for months for months. It was meetings every single day. It was meetings. It was Zoom meetings. It was it was conversations. It was phone calls. It was emails. It never stopped. It was a lot of work, and it was well worth it, though. Well worth it. But it was it's a lot, and having to you know uh, all these different so it was like thirty. I'm gonna say thirty people you know, to come together on one accord to make something happen so beautifully was just amazing to watch for me because it was my first time experiencing it. But leading up to it, the daily meetings, the daily conversations, the stress of that, oh, MG, it was a lot. Yeah. It, it, it takes a lot to put a film together. It really does. I had no clue. But then again, think about it. I told myself and my husband, we, we talked about this. I was like, well, think about it. I'm a credit watcher. And at the end of every film, I like to sit and watch the credits. Well, do you see how many people are attached to these? That, yeah, that's why. Yes. That's just why. Yes. It takes that many people. Yeah, but we didn't have that many people. We had right. Carrie and myself, and my husband, and and Tim Gayer out of out of L.A., who's another exceptional producer who joined the team with us. And Theo, you know, we had like a crew of maybe five or six of us banging it out. Matt, Matt, um, who joined our, our DP. Um, why can't I say Matt's last name right now? I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry right now. I gotta look at my phone. But yeah, so. Yeah, we we did it. We got together. We did it. We didn't have the 70 to 80 people that it, that it takes, you know, but it seems to me that it would take because it was a lot of hats that we all wore. But yeah, it, 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 it uh, takes a lot of discipline, a lot of organization, a lot of planning, a lot of sticking by what you planned, <laughs> you right. know, uh, making meetings on time, scheduling your time, uh, getting some rest. Because that's something that I that I miss out on a lot. I'm sleeping now, but boy, for months I did <laughs> nine months. I tell you, nine. It was like it was like having a baby. Oh my goodness! Honestly, I'm not kidding. It was nine months. The tenth month, it, we started in January, and we shot the film in, in October. So nine months we carried that baby, and we gave birth in October. There it is. Oh yeah, and it's gonna start walking and it soon. It was a lot of labor <laughs> pains. It was a lot. Ooh, we 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's going to start it's walking and it's going to it's going to be out there for everybody to see. <laughs> you know, the cool yeah. thing I have to imagine is when it is a small crew and a small cast, it's probably more personal, too, because there's not a lot of outside mm-hmm. elements or people, you know, who don't really understand the project who are just, you know, part of the money or something. Right. I would have to imagine there has to be some element of just it's ours. We we're creating this and this turns yes. out the way we want it. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing beats being personal. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see this. And, you know, like I said, when I saw the trailer and Theodis just sitting there, that cake looks good, by the way. I mean, I'm trying not to eat that stuff because I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm. I baked the cake myself. Oh, you did? I'm okay. That was probably the hardest I'm part, just making the cake. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. My, we got up early that morning and, and, and baked the, the, the day before, no, the day of shooting, yeah. I woke up that morning and baked. I wanted it to be fresh for Theo because he had to eat so much of it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine if it's like stale or doesn't taste right, and you know. <laughs> yeah, he had fresh home homemade cake from Pandemic Pastries, right. and that's the name of my bakery that I opened. Our husband and I opened oh. up in 2020. We opened it in 2020, and we did great. It's called Pandemic Pastries. We were sitting at home. We wasn't doing anything, so we baked. Get out of here. You make movies and cake. That now that's it. And yeah. cake. <laughs> I mean, how do you how you beat that? <laughs> Right. So that's a little actually that's a little joke. That's a little nod actually uh to the, the, the film being about systemic racism and cake. Because people that know me know that I bake, right? So of course she's gonna have cake in her movie. Of course she yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, it's all coming so together now. Inside joke, yeah. The cake is almost a cast member. <laughs> the cake is a character. The cake is a cast member. The cake is a cast member, yes. Yes, the cake is. <laughs> Yeah, I, like you know, for those who don't know, you know, you, room for dessert. You might think it's something you say after dinner, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> but the cake is definitely a big part of it, and uh, I cannot wait to see this. I'm just geeked to see it. The trailers just got me geeked. Talking to you has got me crazy excited about it, and just what some of the, you know, for people who are, you know, without spoiling too much, you know, what can people expect? What are some of like the quick points that maybe people should look into? When they go to see this and then they hear about it and look it up online and everything, what what should be the main thing that you try to get across? The main thing I'm trying to get across is one black man in America who's having a very bad day, who's tried everything. And he'll say it. He's tried everything. He's tried to do everything right. See, the analogy is this. When he was a little boy, his mom, he loved, he loved cake. He loved dessert. And his mom says, okay, I know how much you want this dessert, so you have to. Chew your food slowly, eat your vegetables, sip that water. Don't sip too much because if you sip too much liquid, you're not going to be able to finish your food. So you follow these rules. And at the end, you'll get your rewards. You'll get your sweet dessert. This black man in America did that in his life. He did everything right. right. He made good grades in school. He went off to college exceptionally well. Got a job at an incredibly prestigious firm. Lived in a, in a great neighborhood, drove a fancy car. But he was still a black man in America. He got stopped by the cops because of the car that he drove and because of the neighborhood he lived in. He got pulled over. He was late for work a lot of times. Uh, he got judged being the only black man in the office or in the, on the, at the job or whatever. And he, So it was always a challenge for him. No matter how much he did right, it was always a challenge. And he was losing. He was, he was losing his family. And that particular day, he lost his job. Because he was too aggressive. He wasn't confident in their, in their opinion. He was too aggressive. So he had lost his job. And so that particular day, he said, and, and he woke up that morning only to find, yet again, another police officer had been exonerated for killing a young black man, an unarmed young black man that he knew personally. So that day, that he was like, enough is enough. I'm done. I'm out. So he just tried to kill himself. But before, on his way home, he pulls over in the middle of all the chaos that's going out, all the people that's marching in the streets because, oh my goodness, here we go again, another cop being exonerated. So there's looting and there's shooting and there's, there's marching and there's all this going on. He drives across town to this, his favorite diner to get his dessert. His one thing, his reward that he yeah. always, and so he gets there and then the rest is, he'll tell you what happened. Right. That's a lot. And then even in the behind the scenes, uh, Theodos talks about how it's relatable Maybe not exactly what he's going through in in this film, but a, you know a lot mm-hmm. of black men can can watch this and feel some kind of relation to what is happening. In, oh, absolutely! In that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! Both of Jean, both of Jean, who was murdered in his own apartment while he was having dessert, did everything right in his life. His mother tells his story. He was an exceptional student. He was an exceptional human being. He worked at his church. He helped out in the community. He was a fabulous man who had his whole life ahead of him. He gets off work, he goes home and sits down in front of a television to have his ice cream and, and someone murders him. 
Really? A cop murdered him? Right. Really? And so coincidentally, when I tell Theo about the film and he he, he agrees to join me and, and, and be in the film and produce the film with me, him and both of Jean look like twins. So that part. Yeah, that's stunning. Wow. I mean, that's that right there. If that doesn't get you to, to see this when it comes out, I don't know what will. That's, um, you know, and it gets normalized. That's the thing. You know, it happens so much that it's like, you know, all the shootings and things you see on the news all the time, too. Like Some of this stuff just happens so often that people just they normalize it and it should never be normalized and should never, you know, taken for granted that we can do something about this. And uh, and I think this film is definitely going to do that and it's going to make people think and understand and see things from another side. And it's, I can't, I can't wait to see it. It's just, um, I'm speechless. I can't even, I can't even say what else because I haven't seen it. So I was like, you know what I mean? It's just, I'm just, uh, I'm just geeked for it. And you definitely got me excited to see it. And uh, everybody out yes. there, make sure you, you follow. Yes. Yes. We would greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for this time and, and, and giving us the opportunity to talk about the film and getting the message out. And that's, that's the thing right now. We have got to get the message out and not just because we want to put out a great, film is because we want to put out a great message and this film is going to help us get that message out this short film is only the beginning it's a precursor to the feature film and um and there's so much more to tell you know and the, and the best artwork even with music is, is something that has some meaning behind it so you know mm-hmm. i mean i grew up on hip-hop music and public enemy and stuff like that so i'm i'm mm-hmm. always looking for something to, to tell me how to be better or do something better so when a movie does yeah. that too it just lasts with you longer and it just makes you feel something you know i could watch a action movie all the time and you know walk away with nothing really from it but something like this it sounds like it's going to stick with you for you know for a long long time absolutely absolutely that is the goal that is the dream that is the plan there it is pamela davis nolan the new project coming out soon room for dessert uh thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing with us some insight and some behind the scenes about the film. And uh, we're just really looking forward to when it comes out and everybody get involved and follow on Instagram. It's, it's room for dessert on Instagram, right? That's what the, uh, yes. Room the, for dessert film. Yes. Room dessert film. Room everybody check it out. Lots Thank of great pictures. So and sh- oh yeah. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. And um, mm-hmm. I've never been to new Orleans, but you know, talking to you and Carrie, it, it, it's like the closest I felt to be <laughs> to new Orleans, but it feels oh, you great. Gotta come. I know I you need to. Come. <laughs> yeah, you got to come down. When we do the premiere, maybe you can come down then. That would be a great. Oh time my god, I'm gonna. gonna I got to tell the wife. Sometime this year. Let me, let me, I'm gonna as soon as he, as soon as she gets home. Like we're going. To, we got to go to New Orleans. I got to see this yes. thing. <laughs> no Mandatory. Doubt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Pamela, and uh, uh, we're definitely gonna do what we can here to get people to know about it and promote the film. All so right. once again, thanks for coming through and and talking about the the project. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait for this thing to come. Everybody uh-huh. listening. Stay tuned. Yeah. Room for dessert is coming. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Thank Pamela. Thank you for your time. Appreciate oh, you're welcome. You. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys out there in theater. I mean, I'm sorry, in film world. There you go. <laughs> in Hopefully, in a, maybe in the theater someday, right? I mean, that'd, that'd be the real yeah. lofty goal, right? So, yeah, yeah, that'd be something. Because yeah. a lot of these small films, they get picked up, right? And eventually, they do end up like in a in a movie theater or in a showing yes. somewhere. Okay. Yes, it can happen. There you go. And it's yeah, part of a bigger you story, so like you much. said. There's more coming, so that's the thing. So everybody stay tuned. Room for Dessert's coming. Once again, just thanks for coming on the show. It's a real honor to have yeah. you on. And I'm going to share, share, share. Oh, everywhere. thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh, I that's will, great. because, you know, we, we have all the people that donated. I share updates. You know, you get the updates, so I share the updates with everyone. That, that's like 100 and something people. Then we have our followers, and then I have my other pages. Oh, wow. And so, honey, trust me, I'm going to get it out there, oh. TikTok everywhere, so. There Ooh, it is. Let's get it out there. Let's get you some people to come on board listening to your podcast too. You know, oh, that'd be great. I have a bunch of friends who who love podcasts. I have okay. a bunch of podcasts. All right. See, there you go. That's all. It's all about yeah. connections, and you know, I I was joking with somebody because you know I don't go out so much these days because I have a four year old. This is like the bar for me now. This is like the club because <laughs> I don't go anywhere. So. <laughs> We're we're homebodies. We don't either, it has nothing to do with being four. It has to do with being well over forty. There it is. Yeah, I'm forty eight. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, oh, we passed that. Oh we yeah, to yeah. <laughs> we almost to the sixty club. <laughs> Yeah, you said sixty five. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm seventy five. So, <laughs> I was ten years after. But that's uh, 
Yes, yeah. that's crazy. So yeah, keep me posted because I look forward to hearing this again. I mean, hearing it back. And, of and course, sharing it to, with everyone. So thank yeah, you so much. Oh no, I no gotta doubt. call Theo and let him know we just did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him know. And yeah, like I said, him and Carrie came on about a year ago, and I mean, I couldn't have been more geek to have them on. And yeah, this is just great. So definitely, I'll I'll, I'll let you know when it's out and uh, tag it and everything and spread the word for sure. All right, all righty. Thanks so much. You got Talk it, Pamela. Soon. You have a great day, weekend, and everything, and definitely stay in touch, and we'll, we'll keep talking about the when the film comes out. All right. Have a great weekend, sweetie. You too. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Big, big thanks to Pamela Davis-Nolan for coming on the show, and make sure you follow Room for Dessert everywhere you could find it, especially on Instagram. Lots of posts on there. You could stay in tune with what's going on with it, when it's getting released, and I'm just really amped to go see this thing when it comes out. You could definitely go to novacvideo.org, keep up with everything that's going on with it, and there's a great behind-the-scenes on YouTube. I mentioned it in the interview. Just go on YouTube and type in room for dessert and you should be able to find it there so big thanks to pamela she's just an, a phenomenal guest and i cannot wait for this to be finished and come out and we could all see it it is going to be something else speaking of short films and connections to walking dead so a couple of years ago i had jason warner smith on here and he was also on the walking dead and speaking of short films he just had one that came out about two months ago and i I definitely wanted to bring it up because we're talking about short films and everything. And his is really great. It's called Chipper. If you go on YouTube, you type in Chipper, and the company that's behind it is called Omeletto, O-M-E-L-E-T-O. You type that into YouTube. It's about 20 minutes long. It's really good. And uh, Jason is just phenomenal, as he always is. You might remember him in uh, The Walking Dead. He played the character that was one of the leaders of the Saviors. He was uh, one of the lieutenants of Negan. He played Gavin. And uh, if you go back and check out that episode I did with him, it was a lot of fun. And we talked about how he, he was definitely like, like a manager, like he didn't want to be there, but he had to do the job. So uh, he's really, really great at what he does. And definitely check out Chipper. Speaking of short films, it's just really cool to see people who've been on here and people I got the chance to talk to with some of the projects they've got out there. It's just really cool to see. So definitely go check out Chipper if you get a chance. And hearing Pamela talk about Erica Badu, I need to pull out that Baduism uh, album. I haven't played it in a long time, but I remember when it came out, well, I think it was like 98? I don't remember what year that came out. I mean, that, that album just blew up and songs like Rimshot and On and On were just always playing and... Uh, Definitely, she's one of the greats. I saw her once perform at uh, Taste of Chicago back when they, maybe they still do this. I don't know. They still do concerts at Taste of Chicago. I think they do. And I remember she was uh, doing her show and it was around 2003. So that would have been, you know, maybe by the time her third album had come out. And Comet had come out on stage and I believe they were dating at the time, which made sense. But he came out there and of course we're in Chicago. So, and uh, yeah, that, that was awesome. That was one of the highlights I don't go to Tate Chicago very often, but that was definitely the best time I went. <laughs> I went to go see Erica Badu with a surprise appearance from Common. Not to mention, Erica Badu and Common had a song together, Love of My Life, for that movie Brown Sugar. So it was just perfect timing to be at that, that show at the Taste of Chicago and being in Chicago with Common and everything. Yeah, that song is a, that's a classic right there. It was kind of like a flip on Common's I Used to Love Her but coming from the Erica Badu side of it. And it, it was, it's really, really great. The video, I remember being awesome. I think it had MC Light, had a cameo in it. And all oh, the good old days. Can't believe that's 20 years ago already. Holy crap. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, Brown Sugar, that's one of those movies you don't hear about too much. Definitely a movie you should check out if you've never seen it. Sana Lathan and Tay Diggs. Hey, this is Jason Warner Smith, and you are listening to Mark Jolliffe on Infinite Banter. Banter. As I had mentioned earlier in the episode, I want to bring back a portion of an interview I did with Carrie Cahill and Theotis Crane, two actors who are on The Walking Dead. But eventually, during the interview I had with them, they started talking about this new short film they were working on called Room for Dessert. And fast forward to now, and this is, of course, where I first heard about it. We have Pamela Davis Nolan on, who's, who's the filmmaker behind Room for Dessert. Now it's all coming full circle. So let's go ahead and play a part of that interview right here where Carrie and Theotis talk about their involvement with it and kind of give a quick synopsis about what it is and during the stages of where at that time it was in pre-production. So here's a clip from that episode. If you want to hear the full interview, check out that episode 
It's called Walker Karaoke because they, <laughs> they talk about how karaoke had a big role in, or maybe a small role, but you know, when, when they're first getting that acting bug, they did a little karaoke and kind of got them that confidence they needed. And, you know, next thing you know, they're in movies, right? So <laughs> it's not necessarily how it worked, but it was kind of fun to talk about. So check out that interview if you haven't heard it yet. But here's a clip from that episode, Carrie Cahill and Theotis Crane talking about room for dessert here on the Infinite Banter podcast. <laughs> probably be ready to be seen spring 2024 would be my theory yeah and theo is playing the lead theo all right yeah, yeah and this it's, is, it's, uh, i'll I, let him tell you more no. no no go ahead no 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 i want you to tell everybody okay well it's a it's a story that um actually pam uh reached out to me about a few years ago so rewind back to when i was talking about how i got into acting person that cast me as the first lead was pamela and uh, so that's how we met. Um, work, I was in one of her plays early on, and she told me about this idea. And it has a lot to do with um, it has a lot to do with gun violence. It has a lot to do with like uh, public dissent as far as our politics and policies go. Just like the way people are really, really feeling, you know, just like getting down to the to the really the real the reality of the way people are really, really, really feeling, and maybe even like forecasting you know because like she's kind of good at that so carrie do you know about no soul no i'll tell you about it after we get off but in okay. short it's a story about uh all the people all the black people in new orleans leaving the city like oh. abruptly and well just like, there wouldn't really be much of a city so that would be <laughs> terrible yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. and so um that was the whole point of it right and and so that's so all the people that have left are, are, are white people. Um, and uh, we played the white people. Jeez. But she's also kind of forecasting, like, she was forecasting uh, gentrification of New Orleans because a lot of the things, maybe not as extreme, but uh, in, in some numbers in some places, are starting to look like the vision she laid out. And so it's made well, me just think about how... It's that there's also the Airbnb thing where, like, you... There'll be a block in, like, downtown the Bywater where there's only one person who lives on that block. Like, yeah. all the houses are short-term rental. And yeah. we finally got our city council to do some movement on it. But so uh, just for everybody out there, if you're visiting New Orleans, visit a licensed bed and breakfast or a hotel. Partially yeah. as well because... An Airbnb won't tell you you're in a dangerous neighborhood, and that is something you have definitely got to consider. And you don't know New Orleans well enough if you're visiting. Right. Please, bed and breakfast or hotel, please. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we have areas that it's like, I don't even know what you would call it. It's not even necessarily, it's gentrification, but it's in a way that is like, there's not even people living there. Yeah. It's an early stage gentrification, which is the most dangerous. Well, no. Late stage is most dangerous. This is like the most immediately dangerous. Um. And, so, and every time we get a bad hurricane, it lessens a little because people realize we will have no power for 12 days. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I don't like that. And I'm like, well, I mean, I mean, we can't live here. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Chicago yeah. winter. It kind of weeds people out a little bit. Yeah, they're like, ah. Time. Right. So they all yeah. come back. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. They remember why they left. Right. Yeah. I do not think I will see Chicago winter. Ever. <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, it's not that bad, you know. I, I was born in Montana, worse. and Chicago is worse. Yeah, I have dealt yeah. with negative 20 yeah, on a regular, no, like, a week, and Montana's dry, and I will tell you, oh. Chicago is one of the coldest places. It's the coldest yeah. I've ever been. Chicago will make yeah. you feel like you can't start your car. You got to be worried about that, and then the wind will smack you like it, you, like it owes money. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's going on? This is too windy. And I'll reiterate yeah. what I said before. I'm from Georgia. <laughs> there you go, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just come up here once, like a couple of days, like, you know, visit family, then get no, out. No, <laughs> because I've lived in New York. I've lived in New York. I've lived in Massachusetts, and I've been through their winters, and that's fine. I feel accomplished, and I don't have to do anymore. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, there you go. You, you can't argue with that. The, the, the box is checked. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Winter did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much, both of you guys, for coming on here. Talk about how people could find you online, follow you guys on you know, like Instagram and Twitter and all the places you guys have, like maybe you have like a website or anything you want to promote and so people could follow you and, and find out when this project comes out. So, yeah. the name of the project is Room for Dessert. 
and you're going to want to follow Pamela Davis Noland. I believe she's under Coffee Colored Dreams as well and Keen Amity Publishing. But if you look for Pamela Davis Noland and you see me and Theo are following her on Instagram. And then for me, I'm kind of only on Instagram and that's kind of all I'm really good at. So <laughs> find me there. I will not pay for the verification. I don't mm, care. That's lame. Uh, <laughs> but it's obviously me because it's uh, gardening and uh, random veterans things and dogs. That's if you see a bunch of those posts, that's me. You'll know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like almost no photos of me, but you will know how my tree is doing and how my dogs are doing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so no TikTok. I will tell you, I uh, I was I, I realized I wasn't following you uh, a little bit ago, and oh, so I funny. went to find you, and I, I was looking like I don't. Okay, okay, no, this yeah, this tracks, this tracks, yeah, this her, this her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like you're like, that's a picture of a jasmine. That's a picture. That's her. These are plants. That's yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> look at the flowers. Look at the flowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I can be found across the board on Theotis Crane. Um, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, my website is Big Dude for Hire. That's great. And, <laughs> yeah, and and everything else is Theotis Crane. That's awesome. Hi, it's Russell Todd. I want you to check out Infinite Banter. I just did a podcast with Mark, and you'll know me from Friday the 13th Part 2, Chopping Mall, He Knows You're Alone, uh, Another World, The Soap Opera and NBC, and a few other things. So hope you enjoy it. Time for you to leave, assholes. That is Kirk Acevedo telling me it's time to go, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. But before I get out of here, I had teased at the beginning of the episode that talking with Pamela Davis Nolan made me think of you know, a lot of New Orleans movies that have come out. You know, Treme being that show that I watched. If you've never seen Treme, definitely go check it out, especially if you're a fan of The Wire. Uh, David Simon, the creator of The Wire, went on to do Treme afterwards, and I think it was set shortly after Katrina and some of the aftermath. And a lot of it focuses on the music scene in New Orleans and a lot of pockets in the in the city and different, almost like cultures and subcultures within the portions of the city, and of course how Katrina affected all of that. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember uh, just being enthralled with it, and there's a few actors from The Wire that are on it. And John Goodman plays a big part in the first season, so definitely check that show out if you have not. I believe it's on HBO Max. But I started thinking about movies in New Orleans that I like, and there's one movie that's my all-time favorite that was filmed in New Orleans, and it's one of my all-time favorite movies of all time. But a couple movies that definitely stood out was Double Jeopardy. If you've never seen that, it's Tommy Lee Jones and Ashley Judd. It seems like there was a lot of those movies in the like late 90s where there was like, a murder or something, and somebody was uh, some husband was trying to pull off some sort of scam, and... Tommy Lee Jones would be one of the guys coming in to <laughs> figure it out. Ever since The Fugitive, he was always doing those kind of roles where he was like the, the lieutenant or the cop or the detective trying to figure out what the heck is happening. Something's not right. you know. So that's a, definitely a good movie. If you've never seen Double Jeopardy, it definitely is a standout. Another movie I definitely thought about when I think of New Orleans is Deja Vu. It's a Denzel Washington movie directed by Tony Scott, who directed a lot of movies, especially with Denzel. And Val Kilmer is in it and Paula Patton. I don't really want to say this guy's name, uh, Jim Caviezel, because he's a he's a nutbag now. If you want to know, just Google him. He's he's a he's a crazy person these days. But uh, that's a really good movie, and uh, kind of plays it like time travel a little bit. And and Denzel, of course. I mean, anything that guy does, I watch. So yeah, it was it was a great movie, and I definitely big fan of that. So if you're looking for movies that are set in New Orleans, Deja Vu is definitely one I would recommend. And last but definitely not least. Is one of my all-time favorite movies, regardless of where it's filmed. But Angel Heart is just a classic. It's Mickey Rourke at the height of his... There was a time where Mickey Rourke was one of the best actors out there, without a doubt. And he is in this with Robert De Niro and uh, Lisa Bonet. Like, right right around that time, she was doing The Cosby Show. If I remember, there was some controversy about her scene with Mickey Rourke. I don't want to get into it too much because I don't know all the details. But I do remember there was something. There was some, oh, no, I can't believe she's doing this kind of thing. But really good movie. Like I said, Mickey Rourke at the height of his his acting prowess. I mean, he's like right right there doing his thing. And, and of course, it's De Niro. I mean, that's what he wants. And it's set in New Orleans. And it's just such a great, great movie. And I... I God, I feel like watching it right now, it's so good. It, it definitely holds up. There's like a scene when Robert De Niro's character is like uh, <laughs> eating an, a hard-boiled egg. And the way he does it is just, I don't know, it's just memorable for some reason. He's just, uh, you know, obviously Robert De Niro. If you don't know already, Robert De Niro is one of the great actors of all time. So 
There's a couple movies right there that are set in New Orleans that definitely popped in my head as soon as I started thinking about it. There's a movie called Hatchet. I remember watching that. It's a horror flick. Uh, definitely crazy movie, kind of uh, independent gore fest. And uh, of course, I can't I can't uh, talk about New Orleans without talking about The Princess and the Frog because my daughter Melody loves Disney princesses, and uh, that's one right there. It's it's an animation. It, uh, my daughter loves it. But definitely, if you've never seen Angel Heart or Deja Vu, I can't stress enough. Go check those out. But of course, when Room for Dessert comes out, you better check it out. I will definitely talk about it when it comes out. Let you guys know how to find it and watch it and everything. And as I said, go to NovakVideo.org for more information. Follow on social media, Room for Dessert. Once again, thanks to Pamela Davis Nolan for coming on the show. Make sure you check out the Infinite Banter Podcast on social media as well at, at Infinite Banter Podcast. Rate and review the show. Go on YouTube. Type in Infinite Banter for clips from past guests. Check out the Spotify playlist, all those things. And once again, thanks to Pamela Davis Nolan. Check out Room for Dessert when it comes out. Check out that movie Chipper from Jason Warner Smith. You can find it on YouTube. Special thanks to Carrie Cahill and Theotis Crane. Played their clip from their episode from a year ago. Before I go, one last announcement. So my next episode will basically be like my five years of doing the podcast episode. I started doing this in February of 2019. So we're coming up on that date, or depending on when you play this, <laughs> the date's probably already passed. But anyway, on the next episode, and this kind of came out of nowhere, I wasn't uh, expecting to have this guest come on, but from The Walking Dead, Irony Singleton is going to be on the next episode. If you remember, he played T-Dog in the first three seasons of the show, and uh, I can confirm he's going to be on the very next episode, which will also culminate in being the five-year anniversary of the Infinite Banter podcast. So stay tuned for that. Really excited to talk to Irony and bring that episode to you next. All right, that's it for me. And until I do another one of these, I'm out. Hey, asshole, get off the road. Being on the infinite banner with my man Mark has been a pleasure.